Barry Sidebottom is an author and historian. His main interest lies in Greek culture under the Roman Empire and warfare in classical antiquity. Harry has also toured the UK with his new book, Warrior of Rome IV, The Caspian Gates. I met up with Harry in Cardiff Castle. Well, Harry, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Pleasure now, to be here. We're in an absolute beautiful uh, scenery here today at the Cardiff Castle, uh, where there's quite a lot of Roman history as such. Um, talking about the Romans in your book, The, uh, the Caspian Gates, just to begin with, just tell the audience a bit about yourself and then we'll get to the book. Okay. Um, well, I'm a professional historian. Um, I teach at Oxford University. Uh, I specialise in Roman history. And I've always written fiction, but a few years ago I decided it was time to actually sort of put up or shut up and see if I could get a novel published. So I tried writing the first of the Warrior of Rome series. Okay, so what? Well, what would you say inspired you to become a novelist then? I don't really know. I think it's one of those things you kind of have a vocation for or you don't. I'd always written fiction, bits and bobs, short stories, in all kinds of different genres. Uh, fantasy, at one point I wanted to be the new Martin Amis. But I figured when I actually came to try and write stuff to get published, it'd be best if I stuck to something I actually knew about. And so went for historical fiction. So why the third century then? Um, there are a variety of reasons. One, it's absolutely fascinating. Um, we know what the Roman Empire was like in the second century. We know what it was like in the fourth. The fourth is very different from the second. We've got lousy sources for the third. There's also a big change, a lot of change, political, military, ideological, but we don't really know why. So it's a fascinating period to research and it's all up for grabs. Your interpretations can vary hugely, which of course is kind of useful for me because I've already done an awful lot of research on it. But, I mean, do you think historical accuracy matters with sort of, you know, historical subjects like the Romans? And to put it into a novel as well? It matters to me. Um, having said which, I, the surface story of Ballista and his familiar, the main characters, is almost entirely invented. There's only... Ballista was a real person. We know next to nothing about him. Everything we know about him was in the third novel, Lion of the Sun. Everything else in the surface story is fiction, is made up. But I do work very, very hard to get everything sort of at a deeper level right. The geopolitics, the what we pretentiously call, we have to use a German phrase being scholarly, re alien, the, the food, the clothes, that sort of stuff has to be right. But so also the mentalities, the way people spoke, thought, they're very different attitudes and values from us. So yeah, it's um it is obsession with me to uh, get things right, yeah. and I hate getting them wrong. Uh, do you have to travel a lot to sort of, you know, get the facts right sometimes, as they say? Oh yeah, that's one of the, one of the great pleasures of doing this series. I've ended up in all sorts of places I wouldn't have otherwise ended up. Um, uh, the province of Merzin, it's a mainland province of Turkey, which is absolutely at the back of beyond. No reason to go there, apart from researching some scenes for a novel. Um, but yeah, you, it's always good to travel to get boots on the ground, to actually look and walk sites, sites like Ephesus, so you can actually see how the topography lines up with the ancient town, how it all works, what guys would have seen if they'd done a quick 360, which I do in an obsessive way again. I take my digital, I stand, walk, plan out the walkways, rather like filming something. Yeah. Character X will walk down this street, he will stop there. So I walk there, I take the 360 shots, then back in my study I can just click through them, see what he saw. So it's a lot of work then? Oh yeah, it's a lot of work, it's a lot of fun. But you enjoy, yeah, it's a lot of fun. And, and just tell us about the, the, the books pre, you know, pre before the, this, this current one, the, uh, the Caspian Gates. Well, it's the Warrior of Rome books are designed as an ongoing series, but they're organised in trilogies. So the first three are a trilogy set in the Near East, modern Iraq, Iran, Mesopotamia. With the Caspian Gates, it's both the fourth novel, but it's also the first in a new trilogy and we're moving somewhere rather exciting, across the Black Sea, the Caucasus Mountains, which uh, I didn't go to all of the places, partly because Foreign Office advice was very unambiguous about one place. It just said, do not travel there. And yeah, it's not really worth dying for your research. But what's some of the unknown facts that we don't know about the, the Romans? What's some of the sort of common unknown facts out there that's sort of covered in this book, would you say? Um, common unknown facts, it's mainly that, in this book, that they actually reached the Caucasus Mountains. We have very definite ideas of where Rome's empire went. We think Hadrian's Wall, 
inside Rome, outside hairy barbarians. It's very seldom like that on the frontiers. They're very grey, ambiguous areas, including the then client kingdoms of the Caucasus, which sort of part of the Roman Empire, part of its hegemony, but not directly ruled. So I want to sort of shift people's perceptions of Rome into embracing new parts of the world and different cultures. Rome wasn't just Roman, it was a very multicultural empire. 65 million people, lots of different cultures. Yeah, I mean, do, do you ever get riders block when, you know, attempted to put a book like this together? No, I get very scared before I start writing. I do about six months research and aim to write them in six months, but just before I actually start writing, I do get this absolute sort of feeling of vertigo and fear that I'll just dry up and not have anything to say. Hasn't happened yet. I'm not 100% convinced writer's block exists. I mean, I think it's Philip Pullman who said, you don't hear plumbers getting plumbers block. You know, some days it's hard to go to work. So what do you do then to relax, to sort of, you know, chill out? To chill out, um, take my kids swimming, go out for a meal with my wife, drink lager with my friends, read trashy novels, anything to take my mind off um, the next bit of the book. So what was the most fun character to sort of write in this, this book? Oh, that's a tricky one. Um, the hero fascinates me. He's a very conflicted guy. He's a, by origin, he's, he's a Germanic warrior. He's an uh, Anglo-Saxon, but he's been sent as a diplomatic hostage to Rome and he's become part Romanized. He can speak perfect Latin. He has a high class Roman wife, um, but he knows he'll never be accepted. And I find that sort of insider outsider thing a lot of fun to do. Do you find yourself quite close to the protagonist, you know, as a character? <laughs> um, a lot of readers seem to think I am, but I don't really think so. I'm not terribly good at killing people in unarmed combat. <laughs> and um, how would you, what advice would you give to, you know, up and coming authors to sort of, you know, I mean, how did you make your break initially? I was very lucky in that I'd already published a history book and the first thing you've got to do, well, the first thing you've got to do is write lots. You get better. It's like a batsman being out in the middle. The more you do it, the better you get at it, the more the confidence flows. But you should try writing all sorts of different things till you get, I suppose, a pretentious expression would be find your voice. You find a style you're comfy with. But in cold, hard, practical terms, you've got to get an agent. Publishers really very seldom buy books that a man, unsolicited manuscript sent in. Your first stumbling block is to convince a proper reputable literary agent to take you on. If they will, I think you're halfway there. Yeah, I mean, you never attended any sort of writing classes, did you? No, none at all. No, so, and that, did the inspiration come from sort of family members? Was there any sort of family members that was? <laughs> Not really, no. Um, do it, no, my dad was a racehorse trainer. He um, only ever read John Buck and novels. Um, no, I just always wanted to do it. And um, in terms of learning to write, it was just reading lots of different styles of books. And initially, I suppose, just parodying them, pastiching them, until I finally hit on a sort of style that worked for me. My direct inspiration for these novels is, well, it's two historical novelists, really, Mary Renault, it's a wonderful um, novelist, and Patrick O'Brien, both late great writers who, could write a genre historical novel, but do so much more with it, make it as good as a literary one. How do you sort of keep to the accuracy of the time? I mean, how do you know you're adhering to some of the set values? Mainly by reading an awful lot of classical literature. The, for example, the ancient Romans, the guys in my books, learn their letters by learning Homer. So in a weird kind of way, because I, I had a classical education, I had the same education that they do. And I think if you keep very close to the literature, then you hopefully will end up with the right sort of mentalities. And I mean, how would you sell this novel in sort of, I don't know, 20 words or so? <laughs> um, it's an action adventure novel with a great deal of history, hopefully seamlessly folded into it. But it's also a novel that raises a theme, and the theme of this novel is belonging and exile. I always like novels that are, I have no objection to just a simple adventure story, but I like books that are adventure story, but have an, as it were, added dimension and added quality. Yeah. Uh, which, Hard action. Yeah. High scholarship, low humour. How's that? Six words. Okay, that's good, <laughs> that's good. I mean, 
would you always stick with this kind of, of um, fiction writing? I mean, have you ever sort of been inspired to, to get into anything else? I'd very much like to write another series of historical novels set in the Greek world. But I also do want to try my hand at writing contemporary novels. I, I think a contemporary thriller would be a lot of fun to do. So what will be your next book after this, do you think? What can people expect after, after, well, after a, in a couple of years, say? Um, in a couple of years, well, I, I have two more War of Rome books to write for the uh, numbers uh, five and six. Then I'm thinking of trying to write a novel on the First World War. I've for some reason become obsessed with air combat in the First World War. I think it'll be socked with camels over the Western Front. Okay, where, where does that come from, do you think? Mainly from my seven-year-old's obsession with Biggles, which I have to read him every night. Because okay. I had to read the books, I thought, heck, I might as well start reading some memoirs of pilots. And they were amazing men. Well, men, they were boys, they were 17-year-olds. 17 17-year-old 17 public school boys with a life expectancy of three weeks. Um, so no, I think it could be a lot of fun to research and write that. Okay, and uh, this book's available from all good bookstores, isn't it? I do hope so. Okay, and you'll be touring the UK soon, or you are now? Well, I'm say. now touring the UK, yep. and uh, I hope to meet lots of readers in the course of it. Okay, well, Dr. Harry Seidman, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much for having me.